Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Robert Player, and I'm the Managing Director of DFP Planning, uh, PTY Limited. I am a town planner with a master's degree in town and country planning from Sydney University. I am a corporate member of the Planning Institute of Australia. I have over 45 years experience as a town planner at state government and local council levels and as a town planning consultant, including providing expert planning evidence on numerous court proceedings at the New South Wales Land and Environment Court and New South Wales Supreme Court. I have been appointed by Karingai Council through my company DFP Planning as the independent chairperson to conduct a public hearing in accordance with section 29 of the Local Government Act 1993 and section 3.34, Gateway Determination of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979 for the proposed reclassification of land at number four, Pennant Avenue, Gordon, being part of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community land to operational land. This forms part of our overall planning proposal to amend the Karingai Local Environmental Plan 2015 as follows. To rezone from RE1 public recreation to R2 low density residential zone under an amendment to the Karingai Local Environmental Plan 2015. To apply a maximum height of buildings of 9.5 metres. To apply a maximum floor space ratio of 0.3 to one, uh, to apply a minimum lot size standard for subdivision of 840 square metres and to reclassify the site from community land to operational land. Um, but it would remain at this time in the ownership of the council but available for the future sale of the land. The site of the planning proposal to reclassify and rezone part of the former Gordon Bowling Club site is in respect to lot Y in deposited plan 387680. The other part of the former Gordon Bowling Club site being lot X in deposited plan 387680 is not included in the planning proposal or the reclassification of the land as it is to be retained as RE1 Public Recreation Zone under the Karingai Local Environmental Plan 2015 and to remain as a predominantly natural area preserving the urban bushland and open space. Section 47G of the Local Government Act provides in part as follows. Subclause two, the person presiding at a public hearing must not be a councillor or an employee of the council holding the public hearing or be a person who, who has been a councillor or employee of that council at any time during the five years before the date of his or her appointment. Subclause three says, not later than four days after it has received a report from the person presiding at the public hearing as to the result of the hearing, the council must make a copy of the report available for inspection by the public at a location within the area of the council. I confirm that I am not currently, nor have I ever been a councillor or employee of Karingai Council. And in terms of my appointment as the chairperson for this public hearing in respect to the proposed reclassification of the former Gordon Bowling Club site. A planning report on the submissions received at this public hearing will be made available to the public by Karingai Council. It is important to note that the gateway determination issued by the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment to the Council's planning proposal to reclassify and rezone part of 4 Pennant Avenue, Gordon dated 24 September 2021, is subject to a number of conditions, 
including the following. Point three, a public hearing is not required to be held into the matter by any person or body under section 3.34, subclause two brackets E of the Act. This does not discharge council from any obligation it may otherwise have to conduct a public hearing, for example, in response to a submission or if reclassifying land. The reference um, above to the Act is, is to the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979. Accordingly, the submissions to be made by any persons at this public hearing are required to be specifically in respect to the proposed reclassification of part of the former Gordon Bowling Club site at number four Pennant Avenue, Gordon, from community to operational land under the provisions of the Local Government Act and it is not in respect to the overall planning proposal to rezone the land from RE1 public recreation to R2 low density residential, apply a maximum FSR of 0.3 to 1, apply a maximum building height standard of 9.5 metres and apply a minimum lot size standard of 840 square metres to the land. Given the above, it is requested that persons making submissions to this public hearing should specifically be in the context of the proposed reclassification of part of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community to operational land, rather than in respect to the other components of the planning proposal. By way of background, public land is managed under the Local Government Act 1993 based on its classification. All public land must be classified as either community land or operational land. Community land is land council makes available for use by the general public, for example, parks or sports grounds. Operational land is land which facilitates the functions of a council and may not be open to the general public, for example, a works depot. The purpose of classification of public land under the Local Government Act 1993 is to identify clearly land made available for use by the general public, being community land, and land which need not be made available to the general public, being operational land. How public land is classified determines the ease or difficulty a council may have in dealing, dealings with public land, including its sale, leasing, or licensing. It also provides for transparency in the council's strategic asset management or disposal of public land. Community land must not be sold, exchanged or otherwise disposed of by a council. Community land can be leased but there are restrictions on the grant of leases and licences and also on the way community land can be used. A plan of management adopt adopted by the council is required for all community land which details the specific uses and management of the land. There are no specific restrictions on council powers to manage, develop, dispose of, including sell or change the nature and use of operational land. The intended council outcomes of the planning proposal for the former Gordon Bowling Club site being in respect to lot why in Deposited Plan 387680 are uh, to rezone the site from RE1 public recreation to R2 low density residential under the Karingai Local Environmental Plan 2015 to facilitate the sale of the land and enable potential residential development. The sale of the land will provide funding for other community infrastructure and the renewal and replacement of council assets. The planning proposal requires a reclassification of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community to operational land. I am informed that the council's notification for the public hearing in respect to the proposed reclassification of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community to operational land is compliant with the 21 day minimum statutory community participation requirement under Council's community participation plan 
and has also involved a notification on Council's website as well as letters advising of this public hearing being posted to about 560 properties surrounding the site. The Council's website notification and letters to surrounding residents advise the following. The public hearing will be chaired by an independent chairperson. The public hearing is scheduled to be held on Thursday 24th February 2022, commencing at 6 p.m. and will conclude at the discretion of the chairperson. The public hearing will be held in council chambers at 818 Pacific Highway, Gordon. And if you wish to attend and or address at the public hearing, you will need to register with council by 5 p.m. on Wednesday 23rd of February 2022. Speakers will be limited to five minutes. In addition, formal written submissions can be made uh, to the independent chairperson for this public hearing, which are required to be uh, either emailed or posted to the council. Written submissions must quote S13604 and be received by 5 p.m. Wednesday, 23rd of February, 2022. Documentation relating to this public hearing can also be viewed on the Council's website. The next part of this public hearing into the proposed reclassification of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community to operational land involves the Council's planning officers and in particular Anthony Fabro, the Manager of Urban Planning, providing an outline of the planning proposal and specifically the proposed reclassification of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community to operational land, which is the subject of this public hearing. Following this presentation um, by Anthony Fabro, submissions will be heard from those persons who have made a written nom nomination to address the public hearing. Um, I'll pass over to Anthony. Uh, good evening, Mr Chairperson. My name is Anthony Fabro, Manager of Urban Planning and Heritage at Kuringai Council. I'd like to acknowledge the Kuringai Councillors here this evening attending as observers, and I believe Councillor Greg Taylor is in attendance. Council is proposing the reclassification of Part 4 Planet Avenue, Gordon, from community land to operational land. This submission is based on the materials recently exhibited by Kuringai Council including the planning proposal and associated supporting documents. The land that is, key, that land that is council is seeking to reclassify, reclassify to operational land status is the former Gordon Bowling Club site, as you can see up on the plan here, known as Lot Y in DP 387680 and has an area of approximately 1.2 hectares. It should be noted that lot X in DP 386870 is also owned by Kuringai Council. Adjoining the site to the west is approximately 1,600 square metres and is zoned RE1 public recreation. There is no change sought to the land classification of this site or its zoning as it will remain public open space and as community classified land for passive recreation purposes. On the 8th of May 2018, Kuringai Council resolved to reclassify the former bowling club site from community land to operational land status and formally seek to extinguish all necessary interests that apply to the land. The recently exhibited planning proposal seeks to rezone the site occupied by the former bowling club from RE1 public recreation to an R2 low density residential zoning. The former Gordon Bowling Club was established in 1950, following which Council agreed to investigate sites to purchase for the club. Between 1951 and 1953, the rear portions of the properties fronting Bushlands Avenue and Cecil Street were progressively acquired by Council. This included the pedestrian access to Bushlands Avenue. Lot DP 38760 was registered in December 1953, creating the site. 
At this time, a caveat was also registered on the title, referring to a declaration of trust to the effect that the site be held as a public reserve. The site was previously leased to Gordon Bowling Club Limited since 1953, when the club was granted a 50-year lease to use the land. On August the 15, 2017, the Gordon Bowling Club Limited advised Kringai Council that they wished to terminate their lease and vacate the property in early 2018. Reclassification of the land to operational status will formally seek to extinguish all necessary interests applying to the land, including the caveat and associated declaration of trust dated 1953 to the effect that the land shall be held by council as a public reserve. The existing, the existing drainage easements are not proposed to be extinguished and will remain. It is also proposed that the existing pedestrian access through the site will be retained including the pedestrian access pathway from Bushlands Avenue Gordon. Reclassification of the site to operational land is warranted for the following reasons. The site was acquired for the purposes of a bowling club and now the site is no longer required for the purpose for which it was acquired. The loss of this site as open space will not have significant wider consequences, noting that there are no significant increases in population or density planned for the immediate surrounding area, and the southern and eastern boundaries of the site adjoin existing heritage conservation areas. The area is well served by existing parks and open spaces, including the Green Gate Park, approximately 500 metres from the site. The subject site was continuously leased to the bowling club since the 1950s for their exclusive use and accordingly the site has not served the same public open space function for the wider community that a general public park or reserve would. A detailed evaluation of the site against the principles of Council's Karingai Open Space Acquisition Strategy has clearly shown the site is not suitable as it would only have low value with a future use of open space given its limited access, visibility, duplication of facilities and contamination risks. A copy of this analysis is included in my written submission. Part of the site, but part of the site being lot X DP 387680 of approximately 1,600 square metres is to be retained as public RE1 recreation zone land and will continue to provide local open space for passive recreation. Council is committed to providing additional open space throughout Karingai, as demonstrated in the implementation of the Karingai Open Space Acquisition Strategy. Council will offset or compensate for the loss of this site by continuing to acquire sites that are better suited for the provision of open space and recreation needs for the community, as demonstrated by the actions contained within the Karingai Local Strategic Planning Statement. The site's future use under the current RE1 public recreation zoning is not considered to be the highest or best use. The reclassification of the site provides council with greater flexibility in dealing with the land in the future, including an opportunity for council to utilise the process of asset recycling to invest in new assets or revitalise existing assets. The Karingai Long Term Financial Plan and Delivery Plan 2018-22 and the operational plan 2021-22 identify projects which are to be funded from asset sales. Projects with funding from asset sales include renewal of existing assets. Projects with funding from asset sales are the St Ives Sports Centre and the Marion Street Theatre Kalara. Upgrade or provision of new assets, including the renewal of buildings, roads, curbs and gutters, footpaths, stormwater network, parks, tennis courts and other recreational assets. Major town centre projects as the Linfield Village Hub and the Taramara Hub, which will involve the construction of many large new buildings, underground parking and associated community infrastructure. Reclassification to operational land status will facilitate the future divestment of the site and assist counts in meeting community expectations for the renewal and replacement of community infrastructure. In conclusion, the reclassification of the land from community land to operational land should be supported. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anthony. 
I would like to emphasise that the purpose of this public hearing is for persons to outline their submissions on the proposed reclassification of the former Gordon Bowling Club site from community to operational land. It is not in respect to other aspects of the planning proposal relating to the rezoning and planning controls for the site, nor is it an opportunity for persons to raise questions seeking answers from either myself as the independent chairperson or from council's planning officers on the planning proposal, including the reclassification of the land. These are matters that should be addressed directly to the council in respect to the council's consideration of the overall planning proposal. Please note that persons making a submission at this public hearing will have a limit of five minutes, which if exceeded, I will request a concluding comment of no more than one minute extension. Persons attending this public hearing are requested to be polite, quiet and not interject whilst either myself as the independent chairperson, council planning officers or residents and other interested persons are making submissions to this public hearing. Please note that this public hearing is also being recorded by the council. Um, thank you for your interest and contribution to this public hearing. I'll now call on those persons that have requested to make a submission and I understand the first person is Edward Ferguson from the Northern Suburbs Football Association. Could I also point out that, as you would have noticed, I don't have a mask on whilst I'm up here because of the social distancing and equally as Anthony um, did, it's, it's quite fine for you to remove your mask while you're, you're dressing, Great. if you wish to. Thank you, Chairperson, um, and thanks for allowing us to speak today. Um, I speak on behalf of, I guess, a local resident having grown up in the Kringai area and also on behalf of Northern Suburbs Football Association, whom have 8,000 members that reside in Kringai and 14 member clubs. Um, we administer community football um, in this region and have done since 1957. And over recent years, we've found an increased strain on the sports fields that we do have in the, in the area. And the numbers put forth in a report uh, by NASROC indicate the participation numbers are intended to grow by 10,000 participants in the northern suburbs region um, by 2036. This adds to the increased pressure that we have on our current fields. Um, and I speak today, uh, I guess, against the rezoning of the Gordon Bowling Club, but also to maintain the land as community green space um, and, in fact, repurpose that space into more useful recreational areas for things such as sports fields and multi-purpose community use. I believe we have a unique opportunity here that if we don't take this opportunity to plan for the future and develop a site that has um, a combination of sports fields on it, such as small-sided football fields, um, fitness equipment, maybe multi-purpose like a man shed, community gardens, um, whatever we can do to support other community initiatives, um, then we're not going to get this opportunity in the future. And that's primarily based on the case that the land value around uh, the Karinga region is only going up and in the future it might cost us or, or the council um, in the region of 15 million to acquire a size of land that, that the Gordon Bowling Club currently um, allows us to purchase or, or to repurpose. So um, on behalf of football, we believe that it should be reconsidered. We should be able to repurpose space um, for the needs of the community at this present time um, and it's def desperately needed for, for the local football community and lots of other sporting groups. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ferguson. I also note that you did put in a written submission um, uh, to be provided to myself as the independent chairperson, which I will certainly consider as well. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Jeff Mansfield. Um, and I understand, Jeff, you're a resident of 29 Cecil Street, Gordon. Yeah, we're back on to the you're back on to site. The, the site, yes. So I'm, uh, I'm speaking against the proposal to reclassify uh, for Pennant Avenue and I support everything that Edwards just said, demonstrating that there is a need for this community site to remain community land. Um, 
You would think the residents of Gordon would have been heard by the previous council, but the previous council had no concern for the interests of the residents. I'll go through a bit of that in a moment in terms of a bit of the history. But the current council seems to be listening a little bit more to the needs and wants of the residents. I just want to focus on the issue of, is this land surplus? Um, since the members of the boarding, Gordon Bowling Club decided not to renew the lease, Karingai Council officers have regarded the site without any community consultation as surplus and available for sale. Uh, as far as I know, there's never been an attempt to consider repurposing this site for community purposes. So let me give a, a bit of history, in my personal history, in respect of trying to engage council to consider other uses of this site. In February 2018, I sought a meeting with Mark Taylor of Kringai Council to discuss the site. Got no response. In April 2018, I sought a meeting with the mayor who refused to meet to consider repurposing the site. In April 2018, I commissioned a landscape plan um, of the site, which I sent to all councillors uh, to consider a repurposing of the site. That had some of the features that Edward was talking about. Uh, it, didn't, it had one space on it for, uh, there could have been a soccer field actually, um, but I'm a bit agnostic um, as to the use of the site at this present time. Um, in May 2018, Peter Kelly, who was a councillor, Gordon Ward councillor, put forward a motion at uh, residents' request to consider to have a debate as at council to use the site for community land, maintain the site for community land. The motion failed to get a seconder and the notice motion didn't go forward and wasn't debated. Shortly thereafter, the council resolved to, um, to reclassify it and sell the land uh, as R3 medium density land to the highest bidder. Obviously, the state government currently is saying it should be maintained as R2, um, so rejecting the R3. But council is seeking to get the land sold to the highest bidder and make it R3 medium density. On the 24th July 2018, the rector of St John's Church advised me that the mayor refused to, uh, refused to meet with us to further discuss or try and discuss again the repurposing of the site. Uh, she cited uh, ICAC guidelines, which I found very strange and unusual and still do. In my view, community use is the highest use for the site as it results in lasting benefits for the present and future residents of Gordon and Karingai. Selling the land only provides temporary benefits to fill a budget hole that, in my view, has been created by the arithmetic by council officers. The land should not be sold to fund other bricks and mortar projects. These plans should be sell these mix and, uh, uh, bricks and mortar projects should be shelled until there's sufficient funding uh, available to make sure, for example, the Marion Street Theatre, which I completely accept as a a good community project, but to make sure that theatre has got ongoing funding. And we know it's failed a number of times already in the past. If we sell this land, Karingai fails again, then we've lost this green space forever. The, um, the Gordon Bowling Club is a valuable piece of community land. It is not surplus on any definition. During COVID, many people, and I've observed many people using that site, soccer kids on numerous occasions playing soccer, walkers and runners, people walking their dogs, people having picnics, people using a water slide on Australia Day on one of the greens. So our community urges the councillors 
to withdraw the Council's current application of the New South Wales Government to reclassify this public green space from community land to operational land, rescind the Council resolution to reclassify this public green space from community land to operational land, and pass a resolution to investigate future community use of this public green space uh, with the involvement of residents. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to also confirm that you've made a written submission uh, to myself as a chairperson for this public hearing. Thank you. Uh, the, the next uh, speaker is Jack Rumbelo from 6 Chalary Street, North Willoughby, is that right? Almost. 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 <laughs> Thanks for hearing us tonight, Chairperson. I'm speaking today in opposition of the rezoning of Four Pennant Avenue in favour of retaining the public zoning in the form of a multi-sport uh, public use pitch. Before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. So I'm Jack, I'm 22. I've lived in Karingai for the vast majority of my life and currently I'm a volunteer of and I'm representing Gordon Football Club. So Gordon Football Club is entering its 65th anniversary this year, and we facilitate football across all ages. And each year we service around 380 players. Our players and our volunteers live predominantly in Gordon, and because of this, we are part of many communities within the suburb. Due to this, I'm making this plea to you from two positions. Firstly, as a, represented, a representative of a football club who is in desperate need of a new football pitch. And secondly, as part of a local community who desperately wishes to keep one of the few public spaces the suburb has left. This year, our club enters its 65th anniversary. We're a foundation club within the Northern Suburbs Football Association. You would have heard from Ed and his wishes for and the, the desire for more uh, soccer fields. Um, we're backed entirely by volunteers and we're still going strong. We've done this in spite of the lackluster facilities that we've had available to us. And what is a very common problem across all of Karingai clubs, yearly we engage in a contest to secure grounds for the coming season, one which, is, one which we are currently engaging in. Sorry, one second. We have one secure location in Darnley Oval, which while serving us well over our long life, is both dilapidated and much too small for a club that has grown by 53% in the last decade. Our senior players use Allen Small Oval, a pitch that is a suburb across and is already a capacity for the demands of ourselves and other local clubs. For a country that is so mad about sport, the spaces in Gordon for kids to actually go out and play sport are surprisingly low. My team, many of which live in the centre of Gordon, must drive to our home ground. Those who don't own a car must carpool, walk for 50 minutes, or take an hour-long two-bus journey on public transport. For our juniors, their parents drive them or they walk the five kilometer journey from Gordon West Public to Darnley. Growing up, my family's moved several times in my life and we've lived in five different houses in Sydney. Two in Linfield, one in Kalara, one in Chatswood, and I'm currently living in Willoughby. In each of these locations, I have never had to walk longer than 10 minutes to an overwork and play football. But living in West Gordon, I would have to cross a highway to Regimental Oval or I would have to walk 40 minutes to reach Queen Elizabeth in West Linfield. If I was to live next to Gordon West Public School, it would be faster for me to take a 20 minute bus journey to Al Luba Oval in South Taramara than walk to any other oval. What this tells me is that kids growing up in West Gordon who want to play sports are either asking their parents to drive them or planning that long journey themselves. Or, which I think is the most likely, they're not going to bother. On a positive note, Four Pennant Avenue is a massive opportunity to rem remedy this. It's central to West Gordon, has a clubhouse already present which can be used for many purposes, including a clubhouse for Gordon FC during the winter season, and enough space for a full field multi-sport pitch that can be used by cricket in the summer and football in the winter. It is also likely the last opportunity. While serving as a huge benefit to our growing club and sport across the suburb, a general use oval has also been desired and shouted for by the community for years. 
Before I finish, I'd, I'll say that being part of the community, I sympathize with the reasoning behind the rezoning. I share in the desire to see Marion Street Theatre refurbished. What I strongly disagree with is this course of action to see that happen. Marion Street Theatre is not going anywhere, and with a strong financial plan, it will be refurbished as the community just desires to see it done. But what you are doing here to only cover the upfront costs of the refurbishment is sacrificing the one opportunity to give Gordon the general use oval it's been so desperately lacking. And once this land is sold off, the demand from kids for an accessible place to display sports, where is that oval going to come from? How costly would it be to buy back the land from homeowners and property developers? From Gordon FC, please reconsider this signing. Thank you, Chairperson. I just wanted to confirm that you haven't put in a written submission uh, to me as part of this public hearing? No, we put in a written submission with the answer. As part of the, yes, okay. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Greg Fennick from 22. Bushland Avenue, Gordon, and I note that you, um, your property directly adjoins Correct. the site. Uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Um, I speak to express concerns and voice my objection against the planning proposal. The key issue I'd like to highlight is the need for honest, transparent information from Council on which public and others can make informed decisions. I can contend that the council documentation contains many errors and is not as suitable, is not suitable as the primary source of information for which the public and others are to rely. My concerns and objections are as follows. At the time the land was acquired, a caveat was placed on the land that stated, the said land will be held as a public reserve. The caveat makes no mention that the use of the public reserve was limited to the purposes of a bowling club. Council justifying this planning proposal on the basis that it is no longer used as a bowling club is just wrong. Council must retain the land as public reserve. That's what the caveat states. The FAQ document states the site is no longer required for the purpose it was acquired for. The caveat states the purpose of the land acquisition was for the use as a public reserve. That purpose remains. The FAQ document is incorrect. Other justifications put forward by Council, which I believe are incorrect, include justification, lot X, um, which is just an area of trees, to be retained as natural area, preserving the urban bushland and open space. Lot X isn't, is, is about 12% of the land area, as we saw, um, and it should be kept, but it's not open space. It's a clump of trees with a road. That space is entirely unsuitable for recreational purposes and should be retained and classified as bushland. Council justification. Council has recently constructed Greengate Park, which is approximately 500 metres from this site. Our comment. Council's website notes this park received a design award in 2014. Is 2014 considered recent? Seven years is the most recent park that the council can point to. Further, Greengate Park is not 500 metres from the site. Google Maps states it's 1.4 kilometres and a 20 minute walk. Using as the crow flies isn't a fair measurement. It's misleading. Council justification. The retention of the site for recreation purposes may result in negative impacts such as noise, parking and lighting. My comment, in the 14 years we've lived adjoining the site, we've never had issues with noise, parking or lighting associated with recreational use. Placing nine new houses or 17 senior accommodation units, or who knows what if the land is rezoned to R3 as the council's stated intention, has a far greater chance of raising noise, parking and lighter issues. Council appears to consider there's only two options, sell the site or redevelop it. Um, for sporting. A third option is to just to keep it as open space. And, and like I'm okay with sporting fields as well and as our um, other people have spoken to. But you can just leave it as it is. Since bowling club has ceased operations and as mentioned um, by the previous speaker, the land has been used for soccer practice, kids riding bikes, picnics, volleyball, jogging, badminton, kite flying, throwing balls and boomerangs. 
None of these activities have caused any concern for my family and all activities cease at dusk, eliminating any concerns of noise or lighting issues. Council justification. Affected by contamination from the past land uses and activities. My response. If a contamination hasn't required council's attention for the past 60 years, why is it required now? Further, any development that is now to take place would surely give rise to contamination issues because you're going to disturb the soil. Council justification. The existing area is currently well served by parks and open spaces, including Green Gate Park and Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Golf Club. Gordon Golf Course currently includes signs that prohibit non-golf playing persons using the site. How can council say that the residents are well served with open spaces if you prohibit their use? As I have demonstrated, the proposal documentation prepared by council is in my opinion flawed and should not be relied upon for the making of decisions that affect the long-term use of the property. Turning to the, what I believe is the real reason for council's reclassification, Appendix 1 states the reclassification and rezoning will allow council to effectively manage its financial position. So in short, it's about money. Mr. Henskin's recent speech to Parliament provided many examples of council financial mismanagement. Council's mismanagement of its finances should not be paid, um, paid for by the reduction of open spaces. Um, COVID lockdowns have shown that we need more, not less space. The current proposal needs to be rewritten and it needs to be rewritten truthfully, accurately and transparently before any decisions on the future use are made. Thank you. Good evening, Mr Chairman. It is in the public interest that this site be retained as community recreational land. Why? It's a valuable asset already owned by council for the community, which can be upgraded, reimagined, a multi-purpose recreational and outdoor classroom space to better meet the public's current and future needs rather than wrongly, short-sightedly, and unnecessarily be divested for private use. It should not be rezoned to enable yet more housing. Why? Because it is significant open space of which there is an ever-increasing need, especially for space like this. Because housing targets for Karingai can otherwise be met because of the site's limitation for any proposed housing, e.g. being classified as riparian land. Six site features in support of its retention as community recreational land. It's already significant size at a, just over one hectare. It allows for more and varied recreational use other than those possible in the trending small pocket parks. It's already in councillor's ownership. It already has flat terrain, eminently suitable for recreational activities. It already has street access. It's already been existing on site. It already has existing on site parking for more than 30 vehicles. Compare Greengate Park Gordon, zero. Cooler Park, Kalara, 20. It's already been a recreational facility for almost 70 years. Thus, it already has the existing infrastructure for replacing, upgrading, e.g. at an amenities block. It's concerning that the consulting planner's report implies that it's not worthy of retention 
as it does not have high visibility. Other areas don't. Coronga Avenue Park, Kalara, Kendall Street Park, West Pimble. If high visibility is considered desirable, install street signage and proudly promote visibility on Council's website. The report attempts to justify that the site is not needed as Greengate Park Kalara is accessible nearby at a distance of some 500 metres. Incorrect, it is more than double that distance. It is not a satisfactory substitute for Pennant Avenue recreational area. It's on the opposite side of the busy Pacific Highway. It's a small pocket park with limited recreational uses, without an amenities block and without on-site parking. It was created primarily for the nearby apartment residents at considerable cost. Council amalg amalgamated and purchased adjoining lots. The Pennant Avenue site is already an amalgamated site and in council's ownership. At what cost, in every sense of the word, would it be to acquire replacement open space with the features of Pennant Avenue site without subtracting and negatively compromising other valuable recreational space? Prohibitive. Consider the future. More, not less, truly functional recreational areas are required for the well-being of the community. Sydney is accommodating an ever-increasing population in densified housing with little or no on-site open space, generally with severe restrictions on its use. Single residential lots are becoming smaller and schoolyards are shrinking. Consider the past. In the 1930s, the visionary parks and playground movement of New South Wales lobbied for land across Sydney to be set aside for active and passive recreational purposes. I can give the file number for that at Mitchell Library. Consider the present. Thanks to the visionary approach, we have Cooler Park Kalara, upgraded by council, prized open space, appreciated by many and varied users, enjoying the healthy and social benefits of outdoor recreational space, the need for which will ever increase. That same visionary approach needs to be applied to the retention of the community land at Pennant Avenue. It is a valuable asset already owned by council for the people. It can be upgraded, reimagined, a multi-purpose recreational and outdoor classroom space rather than wrongly, short-sightedly and unnecessarily be divested for private use. Thank you. just wanted to confirm that you have put in a written submission uh, to, to myself. As a, as a, uh, the next speaker is Chris Vella of 28A Bushlands Avenue, Gordon, and your property adjoins um, the existing Gordon Bowling Club site. Yeah, that's correct. I'm yeah. directly on to uh, Gordon Bowling Club. Yeah. So I'd just like to start by uh, say thank you for giving me the opportunity, but um, just to address the council over there, and you referenced uh, lot X in, in the proposal earlier on and leaving it as the land as it is. That is basically useless land. It is full of trees, and it's an area that the council have not maintained ever. I get out there every weekend and blow that, blow that and mow it and things like that. The council do absolutely nothing to maintain it. So it's clearly not in their interest to use it for, for community space. And secondly, you, you also mentioned about uh, that there's no major dense density increases. You've got a 90 um, bed uh, nursing home going across the road in Bushlands Avenue, currently getting built at the moment. So 90, 90 residents, um, obviously senior residents, but they could uh, well use this um, community space as well. So I just want to say I, I strongly propose against this uh, redevelopment or reclassification. My property is 28A Bushlands Avenue. I'm directly on to, back onto back onto the, to the site. Um, 
I'm, I believe I'm the only battle axe block around the entire development. So and the original footprint has been there since the 1970s. It would directly affect us, uh, affect us um, even more so than any of the other properties, but it will affect absolutely everybody in the community. Community spaces have never been important, more important to all local families. This green space is used regularly by numerous families, older residents, teens, young children, dog walkers, everybody. I see it, I, my, literally my kitchen window backs on to the space. I see everybody that comes in and out of that uh, property. I'm right on top of it. Okay. There is currently no space, sorry, why you argue that the playground is on, um, is on the other side of the highway there, there is currently no space on the west side of Gordon. With children's safety in mind, it should not be assumed that they, that they cross a highway to access was in fact a small park catering to toddlers at Greengate. It essentially provides green space for the high density residential buildings on the east side of the highway. To, to suggest that this limited uh, green space should serve the entire Gordon and Clara community on both sides of the highway is preposterous. With that, you state that uh, in your report that Greengate Park is 500 metres and Gordon Golf Course is 300, 350 metres is laughable. We are not birds. We cannot fly there. The distances are much greater. And to suggest that it's a good idea for children to play on a golf course is just ridiculous at best. Further report in your report on the access to the site. It, it, it's a requirement that all new parks need at least two street frontages and the subject site does not comply with this requirement. Well, first of all, this is not a new park. It has been there a long, long time and should remain as parkland. And traffic access was never an issue when it was used as a bowling green, and not as an issue now, as up to 40 cars and trucks use it, use it as their daily car park that you, the council, permitted the workers for um, for the ridiculously oversized development on the nursing home at Bushlands Avenue. So clearly access as a park has never been an issue and is currently not an issue. Proposed alternatives. This space should remain as a shared community space for the entire local community and not sold off to private entities by the council. Development of this land should not benefit a handful of people at the expense of the local residents and communities. Facilities and open green space are severely lacking in this family-centric area, particularly on the west side of, of Gordon, where there is nothing. Better use of this space for the, that, that could um, benefit the entire community. Keep as an oval, as many people have suggested here, here tonight. Minimal, minimal cost, minimal maintenance, um, and, and you could use the, turn the existing um, clubhouse into some public toilet facilities. What about creating a mountain bike track similar to what we've got in Jubilee? The only bike track in the whole of Karingai Council. The popularity of mountain biking, uh, mountain bike riding is an all-time high, high due to the recent achievements of Australians at the Olympic Games. Why not give this space back to children and young teens to pursue this sport? The council has spent the last two years destroying the bike tracks that local children have created. You know, look at uh, the Tyrone, Tyrone Road, at Linfield or outside Beaumont Road Public School. Clearly there is a demand for this, for this service. Or a community garden space that local residents can tend to. Not only does this allow residents to combine efforts to nurture plants, it will be of minimal cost to the council. Karingai Council prides itself on being custodians of green spaces for their families in the leafy North Shore. This proposal in its entirety is the antithesis of what Karingai Council stands for. Do better. Uh, the next speaker is Matthew Conn from 15 Yarrabah Avenue, Gordon. Not here? Uh, the next speaker is Ivo Porfiri from 39 Cecil Street, Gordon. And look, I'll try not to uh, reiterate a lot of the comments that have already been made. Um, I'll just try to perhaps focus on a few different things. Look, I don't think anyone disagrees that, you know, community land is uh, very significant for the well-being of a community. I think council accepts that. I think we all accept that. And, um, you know, I don't think it's an easy decision sort of balancing competing interests. I think, you know, it's not easy to do. There are competing needs in a community. And I, um, you know, I can understand the, the difficulty of the decision that council has to make and go through. But I must say that I strongly believe that in this instance, the um, land should remain and be repurposed as recreational. And 
you know, um, perhaps there are, there are a few reasons that I would state. Um, uh, firstly, I think that, you know, if you look at the site, I stood at the site, I live behind the site, I don't affront the site, but mm. I, I, we walk our dogs there quite often. I, I did see on Australia Day a group of young people sliding on a water slide and having fun and everything that people have said tonight about the use of, the, of that land, I, I've, I've witnessed. But, um, you know, if you stand on the land, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've had some experience in real estate and I can say to you that it just strikes me that it would not be a good site to develop for, uh, for residential, residentially. And uh, that's because the land is low set and um, it's, um, I counted the number of properties that surround it the other day and there were 26 properties that surround it. And I just fear that, you know, if you were to build properties there, that it would be a, a poor uh, result. And uh, there'd be issues of privacy, there'd be issues of water, there'd be um, issues of sunlight and so forth. And I think there may be more problems caused than solved. Um, and I, I just think if you had a new development there, I mean, if you look at the street, it's a quiet cul-de-sac. It's like an oldie worldy charm sort of, a oldie worldy charm type feeling. I just think it'd be, it, it, it'd be in contradiction. You'd have a new development in this pocket that's oldie worldy. I just think it wouldn't be right. And I remember many years, many may recall that the uh, CSIRO sold a lot of its land in West Linfield. And that was a perfect site, I thought, to, to be redeveloped because it was uh, flat and you could have uh, roads through it and whatever, but in this instance, I just I just don't think it would be the right site to develop. It would just look odd. Um, and the other thing I think what it is perfect for is what it is at the moment. I mean, there's a reason why I imagine many, many years ago it was designated as a bowling club, and that's because it it's, it suited being a place of recreation. So it's like a little amphitheatre where you have the residents around it and, and the community participates within that space. It just seems to me to, be, to have the right feel um, for it to be um, um, community land. And, and you know, in, with, we've been talking about the economics this evening. I mean, you know, the hard work's been done. I mean, you know, the land, the earthworks have been done. The land's been flattened. There's a, a clubhouse there. There's an access way to the station. There's, um, it, you know, stormwater's been done. All those sorts of things. I mean, all the expensive things that would um, ordinarily need to be done if you're reacquiring open space. I mean, you have the consensus of the neighbours that surround the property. All the hard work's been done. It just seems to me that, you know, you'd be sort of, you know, um, by selling it, you just, you just, you know, if you tried to re-establish it somewhere else, you'd have to go through all those expensive processes again. Um, and finally, you know, in terms of options that I could see there, uh, I mean, you could have you know, soccer grounds, you could have futsal, you could have, you've got a club that exists there, could, you could set up a restaurant, I mean, I would imagine it needs to be rejuvenated, uh, but you could serve the community, you could um, have Pilates classes, you could have some tennis courts, you could have a bowling green, the options are endless, I think, in that part of the world. Um, so, I, you know, so um, overall, on balance, I think these decisions are always on balance decisions. I mean, I must say that to be fair to everyone, but I think in overall, my position is when you look at, at, at the site specific, in this instance, I would um, strongly urge council to reconsider and, um, and repurpose the land, the existing land. Thank you. I understand there's two other uh, persons that wish to speak at this public hearing, um, so we're going to give them the opportunity to do that. Their names will go up shortly.
Okay, I think we're right. So the next speaker is Zeng Zhu. Could I ask you to also indicate what your residential address is? Yep, it's 25 Cecil Street. Okay. Um, can I start? Oh. Yep. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen and uh, chairman. Um, we're here, of course, to discuss about the council's proposal to rezone for Penner Avenue with view to sell it for profit under the practice of what council calls asset recycling, which is the term I believe used to describe the sale of underutilised property to fund new major capital projects. The question I must ask is how did the council arrive at the conclusion that for Penner Avenue is an underutilised asset? I mean, what happened to community consultation? It's common knowledge that there is a lack of open green space in this area. There are no sporting facilities at all or mixed use facilities of any consequence on this western side of the highway in Gordon. Penner Avenue is the only publicly accessible open green space of significance on this western side of the highway in Gordon. And in Council's um, open space acquisition program has identified this area of Gordon as a red zone. So um, as you can probably see from here, Mr. Chairman, um, which means that is basically an area that's designated by the council itself as the uh, area of highest priority to acquire open space uh, due to the high density probably along the, the highway, which is mostly, I think, R3. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the council's referred to uh, Greengate Playground, which you know, has been commented by many of my predecessors. It's more than uh, 500 metres from Fort Pennant Avenue, and clearly we're not birds, so we can't fly there. Um, but most importantly, we all know about the effects of COVID and um, effect of you know, green space on mental health. I work in uh, insurance, specifically life insurance. I see every day many people um, going on claims due to mental illness. I know firsthand how important having green open space, a sense of community, sporting facility, physical well-being is to reducing that mental illness. I ask myself every day, I've got two toddlers. Um, when they grow up, do I want them to live in an area where there's no green space, where there's no public facility, where they can't play sports? Um, as many of my predecessors said, you have to walk miles uh, to go to a sporting facility from where we live. So I, I really uh, do think the land needs to be retained for community use. Um, and this is not just my view. Uh, I have a petition uh, where I've asked my neighbours to uh, you know, uh, consider what their view is on this topic, and they've clearly signed uh, this with over 1,000 signatures to ask the council to stop the rezoning of this space. Um, the council also you know, asked what, what can we use this space for. There's so many uh, opportunities that we can reimagine this space. Obviously, there are senior housings along the Pacific Highway. There's the new uh, nursing home, which is being built in Bushland. So clearly, there's a need for uh, uh, space over there. Uh, we can use it for a community garden. We can use it even for culturally and linguistically diverse community space. You know, there's nowhere where we can practice our, our cultures in where we live. And, you know, given my background, <laughs> I know there's a lot of uh, people from an Asian background who likes to play Tai Chi, but, but, but there's nowhere for them to go. And I see um, few people actually playing Tai Chi at the uh, Gordon Bowling Ground because that's the only space they have. Now, I know many um, of us also mentioned about the Gordon uh, Golf Course. And yes, it is in close proximity, but uh, any of you who's been to the Gordon Golf Course will know, if you try to walk across the golf course, you hear, you hear people say, get out of the way, because that's literally what uh, one of the golfers told me last Friday when I tried to take my one-year-old and five-year-old to the Gordon Golf Course for a walk, and that was at 8 p.m., where I thought, surely it must be safe to do so, because it's just not feasible uh, for me to take my two kids to uh, the Green Gate Park, crossing the highway. Um, but also speaking from my experience, um, I was born in China. Uh, I came to Australia when I was relatively young, but I still have vivid 
um, impressions of the concrete jungle I lived in, where you know, we don't have play spaces, we don't have uh, open green spaces. And my first apartment was an apartment in Glebe, where it was 50 square metres. Uh, and yet, I, I'm currently living in this um, gorgeous Korean guy area with where most of my neighbours are Chinese, actually. And many of them tell me the reason they decide to move here is because of this open green space. So I really hope council will reconsider your actions, which will affect many future generations to come, where we'll lose this space forever because with the current land value, it's just not possible for us to acquire this space again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Tim Kumas. Yeah. Could you tell me Thank you. Where, where your residence is? Uh, 90 Provincial Road, Linfield. Um, I, I discovered Pennant Park uh, during the pandemic in uh, desperation of looking for new places to take the kids to walk and explore in Karingai when they were very bored mm -hmm. of all of the other places that we've taken them to 150,000 times before that were in closer proximity. Um, and I became aware of uh, Chloe's um, agenda, I guess, to, to push uh, a broader petition to save this space. So I, I uh, support that agenda and support all the agendas of the other sporting facilities and sporting clubs like uh, the soccer clubs that have um, spoken beforehand. Um, I want to touch on the financial aspects a little bit because I think that's been somewhat neglected. When you look at Karingai in general, the average land value per metre of property in Karingai is over $2,000 per metre on average. So for council to propose that they sell the site with all of its flaws, its contaminated land supposedly, and its riparian aspects um, and biodiversity aspects, uh, and to only get 10 or 15 million dollars for 10,000 metres of land is absolutely preposterous. To acquire even a quarter of that by purchasing existing dwellings or sites from other areas in a contiguous block in Karingai is far more likely to set the council back in the order of 50 to 100 million dollars if you consider the average property in Gordon is going for around 3 million dollars for something that's really not special. Um, to then say that, oh, it needs to be flat and it needs to be accessible and it needs to be visible and contiguous, you can imagine that all the neighbours in, a, in a, a development such as that are going to start jacking up their prices. So you're going to be paying more than $3 million per block to attempt to acquire one or 2,000 metre blocks uh, that are used as examples like um, the one in Greengate Avenue that don't compare to the 10,000 metres that is uh, Pennant Avenue. So I, I think it's absolutely preposterous to A, sell it for such a paltry sum and B, consider that something else could be acquired with the funds of, that are returned from such a paltry sum. Because simply put, if this is sold for 10 or $15 million, you'd be lucky if you could buy three properties in Gordon anywhere else. Um, the other thing I really want to touch on that has been neglected in all of the uh, council submissions is the uh, biodiversity aspects in the area. There's been no biodiversity assessment done in the area and having spent some time in, in the area, especially with all the recent rains, it's evident there are a large number of um, different frog species that are in the riparian uh, flows that go down the valley into Pennant Avenue. Um, while I'm not a frog expert, I've seen at least five or ten different looking frogs, with some with yellow bodies, some with red, some with darker black ones, and I'm sure that nobody from council has bothered to actually look at what's there based on some of the poor groundwork that other people speaking tonight have pointed out. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to point out is the agenda for the state government to push greater density onto uh, all areas of the state in terms of housing. Now, the, as Chloe mentioned, the o Open uh, Space Acquisition Plan has this area highlighted in red. It is close to R4 zone buildings all along the highway corridor. 
It is close to a highly dense uh, nursing facilities. There are no parks that are suitable for seniors aspect access anywhere within walking distance of the new Bushlands Avenue development. There's no parks that are accessible within less than 1.5 kilometres of most of the R4 dwellings along the highway on the western side. Um, and as mentioned, Gordon Golf Course is neither suitable for uh, walking toddlers, nor is it suitable for people with walkers. Um, the existing facilities uh, have buildings that could be used for many purposes, whether it be seniors recreation, seniors clubs, men's sheds, sports clubs. The point is, and I know I'm dwelling on it because it's been mentioned multiple times, the existing site has both had the development into making the land accessible, it's had development into providing a base set of facilities that could be used for multiple purposes, and it is the lowest cost way that Karingai can have more usable community space. The other point I wanted to labour on as well that hasn't really been mentioned is uh, commentary in the plan that says the site is not secure because it doesn't have good visibility. The site is in a valley. It is overlooked by 25 or 26 other properties. With the working from home model that exists these days and the average uh, and the dispersion of uh, resident populations in Karingai being geared towards families who have people working from home or older residents who are home all the time, there are 25 or 26 properties that can see into the entire area all the time. There has never been any uh, indication of security issues from what I've seen when I've taken my kids there. And I, I think the assertion in the council's plan is completely baseless that it, uh, it has poor security and poor visibility because it has excellent visibility from all of the residents who surround it. Um, the other point I'd like to make is it is accessible from three different streets. There's a laneway through uh, Cecil Street. There's Four Pennant Avenue itself with all of the parking associated as well as the lane from Bushlands. And should the council want to make it a much better place to develop or much better place to access from the highway, they could buy one property on Yarrabah and open the entire facility up to very, very close access to everybody on the highway because they wouldn't have to walk all the way down to the battle axe access. Um, the other thing I would like to make a point of is Karingai also makes uh, a point of attempting to support biodiversity and preserving tree canopies. There is 10,000 metres of space that could be used to expand the ironbark forest around the periphery of any facilities that were enhanced in that area. There is also a, uh, a tree that we've discovered is the descendant of the lone pine in Gallipoli, which is a tree that actually warrants heritage protection and conservation um, on the east side of the bowling club. So I don't think any of that has been considered in the preparation for sale because it has been too geared by a heavily biased prior council who just want to get the land sold so they can do convenient pet projects. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for your interest and contribution um, from all of the speakers uh, to this public hearing to consider the proposed reclassification from community to operational land of the former Gordon Bowling Club site. Um, I have taken, as you've noticed, uh, a number of uh, notes from the submissions that have been raised. And uh, as I mentioned, there's a number of written submissions that have been uh, also provided to to the council, which they've forwarded on uh, to me for consideration. Uh, so uh, again, um, thank you for all of those that have uh, attended tonight. Uh, I will be reviewing all of those submissions and preparing an independent report, which will then be submitted to the council for its consideration. And um, uh, as required, it will be made available to the public um, uh, uh, for, its, for it to, view as well. So thank you and good evening.